like that. So what I'm going to do is when I, once I shade in the, in, the, in, the, in the details of the interior, I'll come back with a pencil and, and cut up those lines. But I'm going to concentrate more on the body here. So this is the color break in the body side down by the rocker. This is called the rocker panel down here. And that's a throwback turn to when cars were had running boards and things like that. So then I'm going to carry it through to the rear and I'm going to let this sweep tell me where that curve is going to be. Look at that. So it kind of fades off and we don't know what the bumper is going to do but we're going to give it some bumper so um, we can show that bumper curving around and then down. So that's the face of the bumper. We'll just give a little indication of it. We don't really show that. Sometimes bumpers are not, not wanted to make the car look good. Okay, we're going to hit this belt line right here. Again, this is a straight line, but in perspective, we're going to give it some plan view. So it looks really attractive to the eye. If this car were to ever make it to production, we would clean it up dramatically. And that's where the challenge of a designer is, to make the car still look good, even though you had to fit it on a package. Okay, let's just say we're going to tuck the mirror. I didn't show it on the other sketch, but we're going to tuck the mirror behind, behind this body sculpting. So that's going to be the indication of a mirror. Maybe it's a camera. Yeah, let's do that. It doesn't have to be wide because there's no glass on it. It's just a camera. So there's the bend in, the, in that. And then there's the bottom right there. So I didn't show it on that one, but at least it'll give us the idea of a front fender sculpting. So. going to give a little indication up here in the front because I'm missing some paper here. Didn't plan that out. And this car has got a little chrome on the front, so I'm going to, it's at the top, so I'm going to delineate that and give a little indication of the chrome. Huh, okay. I missed it. We'll give it. We'll give it that. And it's got a subtly arched hood. So. And then again, I'm going to re be able to reach over this styling. Oops. Too much. Okay, this is one of the few times I erase and I use an eraser pen. You can see it right here. It's got an eraser in it. It pulls out. It retracts. So again, that'll disappear. That'll disappear when I start illustrating, even though the focal point's not going to be on this section of the car. It's going to be... Okay. Now... Let's get to the fun part. This is pastel. So grab a, a scrap of paper. I usually fold it in half. And we are going to create the, the pastel to shade the body. Since it's a white car, it's not going to get much shading, so I'm going to do the blue for the glass. So we're going to grab my chalks. Since it's blue, we're going to grab the blue. Since I've already got some old blues here. I'm going to grab a blend. I usually do this off to the side, but I don't want to interrupt my camera. So, I just take the stick. You can see I've dug into that before. Take the blade right there and I scrape it. 
to get a dust. And you can custom blend your colors. You can add purple to it. If you want to make an aqua or a teal, if you don't have an aqua or teal chalk, you can add some green to it. It's where your color theory class comes into play. Where you can blend this. Maybe, maybe the car will have orange wheels with, with blue glass or blue paint. So we've got our blue. And then we're going to take a, a cosmetic or a litho pad. But cosmetic pads work just as fine. Litho pads are very expensive. And they're not, they're big, so you don't really need everything you used on the pad. Sometimes just a little cotton pad, a makeup pad, you can buy them at Target or at Kmart. I fold it in half. If you want a crisper line, you can put a piece of cardboard in there and fold it, and it would be, so this becomes my brush. See? See how that works? Now watch. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to stir it around. I'm going to move this off to the side. And I'm going to lay this in the core, which is where the, where the glass transitions to the top. So, let me see if you guys can see this. Okay. I'm going to follow the lines that I lay down. Like that. Now, what I can do, this color blue I'm laying on should be as dark as that. Because it's the same piece of glass. It's reflecting the same amount of light. So I'm going to come back and hit it again. I'm going to let that paper fill up with this, with this blue. Now, the way some people do it is they put fixative on it. But I have another little technique that I use. So this is going to be faded. Like that. Now, the back window, the backlight and the windshield are going to get a little bit of different color. So I'm just going to apply a little bit here to indicate that the, that the surface has changed. It's different than here. It's curving back. It's reflecting light that's coming from here. Since I'm not showing an alternative light source yet, I'm just going to give that a little dusting there. And the right side of the car, since it's falling away, it's going to have different light on it too. So what I have been doing lately is I've been sketching the interior. So I got one step ahead of me. So what I do is I grab a light blue marker like this. And I come in and block in all of the interior parts. Since this is going to be glass here, I'm going to show the A-pillar on the other side, right here. I'm also going to show the, the, the belt line, this over here, over here. Since it tilts down, it comes down right here. I'm going to fade it out because the glass is going to be shiny. Now. The, C, the, the B pillar runs across here, but since there's a break in it, because this is glass, this is solid, I'm going to show some, some, uh, some structure here. And on this side, because it's darker, I'm going to show the B pillar coming down. Like that. Now, the back, since I don't know what's going to... I'm not going to get too fussy about what that quarter window looks like. I'm going to show you a little structure here, and right there, that's all I'm going to do. So, the inside of the car will show through in the darker section of the glass. So I'm going to give you a little material thickness here, and maybe a little bit of the seat. So the headrest to the front seat is going to be right here. 
Headrest to the front seat's going to be right there. Maybe we'll have headrests in the back. Okay. That's the bottom of the door. The bottom of the glass. Let's shade in the headrest here. The B pillar is going to go down like this. And it's going to tuck behind the glass and behind the solid. So there we go. Now I'm going to come back to my pastel and I'm going to hit it hard. Now what some people will do is put spray fixative on it. Spray fix is a little bit um <clears throat> a little bit messy. And like I said, I've got another technique to overcome that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this as hard as I can. If it's not dark enough, I come back with another step or I add more dark. Don't add black, but add a darker, darker blue to this. So I've got some dark, dark blue here. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to put a little, little dark blue dust down. This is where you, you become an artist because then you start mixing this with this and you get a darker blue. Then you just lay that in the core and this is a great place where you would have your piece of cardboard underneath your pad. But what also pastel gives you is the ability to erase it. So grab the eraser pen again and then come back and erase what's what's not should, shouldn't be blue. You just roll it on there and erase it. And you come back here since it's on the fin and I don't want it on that that quarter panel coming through there. Just just a sketch with the eraser. There should be a little break here. So we're going to sketch in very light at first and then gradually press it until you get what you want. And then I'm going to erase all this here to trim off that rear glass. Now, you can erase this, or if you're, if you're cutting your sketch out and putting it on another piece of paper, don't even bother with this. Another thing, have a piece of paper under your, underneath your skin, like this, because you will get sweat. I'm under some hot lights like I'm an actor. You will get some sweat on the sketch and this pastel will stick to that before it'll stick to the paper. Okay, sweep all that stuff off and we're not looking bad here. We're not looking bad. Okay, got a little, little bit of stuff here. So to make that, to make the glass pop a little more, I take a dark blue pencil I have a, usually when I decide what color I'm going to make this, I usually have a pencil, a chalk, and a marker, all the same color. So then I take this, let me see if you can see it, okay. And I come in, I'm sketching across, this is the motion of my hand, and I come in and I lay in, lightly lay in my core. And since the sun is behind us, this core could be faded a little bit more. It'll be darker over here and darker over here. And that gives you what, what we've always called east-west. The east-west, it gives you direction this way as well as depth as top and side. So, I'm going to lay in some darker blue. And this is where your sketching technique comes in. As if you were sketching a bird. Or sketching a... A, a shiny cube and again this is my technique other people have different techniques I've tried it all 
I've done it right now this is where I like to this is my wheelhouse so I'm just shaping this curve again this is a soft curve where the airbags would be in a, in a side airbag car just cover that area hit it. Now if you squint, this intensity should be the, the same as this, or very close to it. So I'm going to try to build it up again more. Really, really shade that core in and fade it out nicely. If this car had a uh, had a sharp edge on the roof, this dark color would be right next to the white. And that would make the viewer look like there's a really sharp edge right there. Because everything shiny is white, white against black or darkest color. That's value contrast. It's very important. So I'm going to add a little artistic stroke here to kind of break up. I don't want it to look too architectural or like a CAD did it. I want someone to say, wow, someone, someone really sketched this. Okay. Now I bounce back and forth from thing to thing, whatever strikes my mind. So now that we're done with that, I come in and get a little bit of this color down here. So everything looks like it belongs together. Like that. Let's see. Did we... Did, okay, it's not that much of a hit there. So, we've got that going there. Now, stand back and squint a little bit and see what it looks like. Okay, still a white car, so what I need to do is I need to get a body color chalk. So white is going to reflect everything, but it's going to reflect it very subtly. So what I normally do is I get a gray, a light gray, and I make it a dust again I've got very little gray these these I live in Delaware these chalks are hard to come by I'm gonna to have to order some online so you can see I use a lot of this color I'm creating a dust again some people will take talcum powder baby powder and mix it in here's my baby powder that I've had for 15, 20 years, and I barely, barely use it. It only takes a little dusting. It softens up the pastel. It, for some, it glides on there, especially with a, a finer paper. But since I've got a rough paper like, like newsprint, and it all depends on what you're used to working with, Newsprint is fun because it's inexpensive. You don't feel too bad about <clears throat> blowing through a, a piece of paper and the idea stinks and you just move on to another one. Okay, again, another cotton pad. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to come down and I'm going to dab in my, in my gray and I'm going to hit everything on the side of the car. where the transition like the glass is but it's it's going to happen on the body side so we're going to change the color here in the transition so this is the high belt line here a 
like that. We're basically showing the viewer that the body is going to change. It's going to roll over towards the center of the car more. The wide spot is going to be through the doors. Unless you've got something really bizarre, this is usually the body language of a car. Okay. Since this is a straight up car, it's going right to that edge. Now, the magic on my body side is this style line. So, the light down here, the, the body down here is going to reflect the, the ground tone. So it's up in this core area that we're going to get another transition. And then we're going to get the transition right here where that line changes. And you'll see how I'll sculpt this out with the eraser. So, this is going to be a light along here. Got to get the tail. Hope I don't run out of battery here. I never thought to check my battery and see how long it was. And while we add it, if we're going to decide what color the wheels are going to be, you want to give them a little, give them a little hit, because we're going to put a shadow, we're going to put a reflection on those too. So give that a little hit as well. And in the front, we're going to get that. But since this is so far away from our eye, we don't really have to show that. I am going to show one thing I forgot, and that's the sculpting of the fender. This this body line coming down here where the wheel, uh, wheel arch is cut out of it, you're going to see a section line here. It's going to come out just a little bit and then down. So that tells the viewer that body line starts at the bumper and just cuts right up to the glass, irregardless of whether the tire is there or not. The car was shaped before the tire was cut into it. Okay. So, let me do a little dusting here. Now, I'm going to add my eraser. Half my problem is finding what I just had in my hand. Okay. Now, I'm going to erase away what I don't want. Like this right here. Erase this away. And what I normally do is I come back with these crisp transition lines, like right here. I come back with a pencil, the color of the car. And I just hit that lightly. And I may have given you that pointer in a few tips on Facebook. So, again, a little sweep. And then we are going to hit with a marker now this is rather faded marker but this is it's a broad nib and an arrow nib you see that i'm going to use the broad nib and i'm going to sketch in my horizon line basically it's going to be that line there in the body and this tells the viewer what kind of surface the car is sitting on and since it has this style break in it i'm going to let that let that reflection dance on that style line a little bit but it's going to come right through. How do I do it on the back? Okay, I do it below the wheel arch. So let's do this. Just lightly sketch it in. Then come back and hit it with the broad nib, but I'm going to angle it. So I'm not going to put 100% of the nib on there. Now this color will fade, but I'm going to do a good job of lightly breaking it so it doesn't be that obvious. With the newsprint paper, with any paper, it's going to absorb your marker. So that reflection is going to dance around that, around that style line. Now, What's going to happen on the upper side of it, since the body's fairly straight, this line is going to come right in here. 
and it's going to die off. It's going to do a zig. That reflection is going to pull up. Like that. Again, I'm going to turn it over and use the broad nib of the marker and I'm going to angle it. You guys can't see. I'm going to angle it so it comes down here. Again, this color needs to be as dark as that. That needs to be dark as that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and drop my cap. I'm going to come back and hit that again with my pastel. What some people will use is fixative. Especially if you've got a smooth, smooth paper, like the vellum I showed you earlier. Fixative is going to look like... I thought I had some. I guess I don't. There's a workable fixative and a non-workable. The workable means you can layer on top of it. The non-workable means it's so smooth that you better, you better have everything done because you can't add to it. Basically what it does is you got to get everything right and then you spray it and it locks everything down. But the workable adds texture on top of it so you can build on top of it. So most everyone uses the workable because then you can add more color to it. So. Stand back and squint a little bit, and I'm going to add some more to the bottom here to make it look like the car is rolling, the body side is rolling, and it's going to pick up some light from the ground. Because what I'm going to do later, I guess I, I could do it now, is put a little ground tone on there. So. You can do that one of two ways. You can use the chalk or you can use a pencil. Both can actually have the same effect. So I'm going to use a yellow ochre pencil. It's orange. It's a light, light combination of orange and yellow. It's a beautiful color. And I'm going to lay in some ground right here. Just with the side of the pencil. Just, just give a little indication of ground color here and a little bit of that's going to show up in the wheel depending on how shiny it is if it's a if it's a stainless aluminum wheel it's not going to show that much if it's chrome it's going to be very very crisp okay now in the body side since this body is contoured out it's not going to show that much but this side will this is the car body. Say, say this is plastic. This is going to be steel here. So this is going to be the shiny part of the car right here. I'm going to give it a little tone there. A little bit up front here. And a little bit in the back. And what some people will do... Oh, I didn't finish this. Okay, where did my marker go? Is it underneath here? That's my pencil. Looking for my blue marker. Where did I put it? Half the time you spend is looking for things you just had in your hand. It's like fixing a car. Am I looking at it and I don't see it? I thought I just had it. Got a bright blue lid on it. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to crispen up this lines because that white is really distracting here. And get rid of these breaks here. Too much eye candy there. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back. Again, I'm going to switch whatever the mood strikes me. Make sure you got the black and not the dark blue. They look very much the same. I'm going to do the brakes for the glass here. And because the car is curved, I'm going to do the dark. I'm sorry, guys. Let me get you a little stability here. I'm going to darken what's farthest away from me. And since the light is being panned over the car, you're not going to see all these details with the bright light here. So, again, I'm going to be real crisp there and just fade it out. See how that works? And for the arc of the front windshield, my arc is in here somewhere. I'm going to find it and do the same thing. I'm going to be real crisp on the other edge and then fade it. And what you can do is come in with your finger, your hand here and just give you a nice little radius there. Makes it look like it's, it's tucking around the car. It gives your eye that little, oh, that line drops over on the other side. I get it. So, again, we're going to do a door break on the side. And it's going to be, the line is going to be darker inside the dark core. So it's going to be dark right here and it's going to fade out. And my pastel ink is not as hard as lead, obviously, or even a ballpoint. We're going to give that a little hit there. And then the rear glass is, the rear door cut is going to be right here. And it's going to be dark in the core. And fade out because that sun is going to bleach us out. We're not going to see much detail in that sun. Now, critical line in all cars is this A pillar because that shows how fast the car is. It sets and it's it like a lot of other lines sets an attitude for the car. So again, it's going to be dark in the in that area. Oh, I highlighted the wrong one. Dang it. Okay. Let's see if we can correct this mistake. So, 